नमस्कार टू ऑल माई सर डॉक्टर ऋतुराज सिंह राठौर एंड आई एम हियर गिविंग प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन वी एल एस आई टेक्नोलॉजी ओपनिंग न्यू हराइजन सो बिफोर वी वी गैन लेट एस डिस्कस अबाउट मी माई सर डॉक्टर ऋतुराज सिंह राठौर आई हैव कम्पलीटेड माई पोस्ट डॉक्टर फेलोशिप फ्राम हावर्ड्स कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ नटाल सिचुएटेड इन डर्बन साउथ अफ्रीका इन नैनो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स ग्रुप डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक इंजीनियरिंग बिफोर दैट आई हैव कम्पलीटेड माई PhD and Masters of Technology from NIT Hamirpur in VLSI Design Department of Electronics and Communication and my Bachelor of Engineering is also from University of Rajasthan Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering I have more teaching experience of more than 10 years and research experience of more than 5 years <laughs> and anyone interested you can visit my Google Scholar link this is my Google Scholar link you can find out and know more about me and my achievements included are uh, get qualified and get qualified i got the i triple a student paper award of 250 us dollar and apart from that i got sponsorship for masters doctorate and post doctorate also and i have published more than 20 research paper in jpt and renowned conferences and journals which are indexed in scopus and sci and published various in various countries like USA, UK, Singapore, Austria, Mexico, Thailand, etc. So this is a brief introduction about me. So let us start with the topics which I am going to cover in this presentation. It start with the background and introduction, VLSI Word, Moore's Law, what are the design process for VLSI, and objective of this VLSI course. So first of all, we will discuss about the evaluation of evolution of transistors so it's all start with the as we know that it's all start with the bernard gill from bell laboratories in 1947 by the invention of bipolar junction transistor which he compromised using the combination of the p type and n type semiconductors after that the invention of jfat so jfat is invented by japanese engineer sunshi nishijawa and why Vatakning in 1950, but the first practical JFET was actually made after a decade later, means around 1960s. In 1959, this is the benchmark. The 1959, the invention of metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor by Kang and Martin at Bell Laboratories is the basic building block of any IC technology. So MOSFET is the major uh, player in the field of VLSI. Apart from that, the invention of IGBT, that is insulated gate bipolar junction transistor, it is having the benefit of uh, BJT as well as advantage of MOSFET combined together to form a single device, that is known as the IGBT. The first generation IGBT was were prone to failure through the effect of latch-up current. The second generation is improved, one and the third generation is even better with speed rivaling the MOSFETs. In 2004 and 2011, the invention of gallium nitride transistor and silicon carbide transistor. These are the high performance transistor, basically used for, uh, uh, let us say, about the aerospace engineering or space engineering. So it's a high performance transistor. But the major invention in the field of VLSI is start in 1959 by the invention of the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So the whole VLSI course is. somewhere we will discuss about the mosfet structures so integrated circuit further is classified as uh, ssi msi lsi vlsi ulsi gsi so there is a these nomenclatures have a full form for example ssi stands for small scale integration msi stands for medium scale integration lsi is for the large scale integration vlsi is the large very large scale integration ULSI is ultra large scale integration GSI is giga large scale integration so ultimately after the VLSI these nomenclature is commonly known as the VLSI that VLSI ULSI and GSI is combined in known as the VLSI so it's all of the same thing so it depends upon the number of the transistor fabricated on a single chip for example in case of SSI The active number of devices that are fabricated on a single wafer is around one to hundred. The examples are gate and operational amplifier. 
apart from that msi that is 100 to 1000 the registrant and filter are the example lsi is around 100 1000 to 100000 is adc dac and then vlsi 10 is the power 5 to 10 to 6 is memory computer signal processor ulsi having a more than 1 million transistors that includes the old generation processor and gsi is if the number of the transistors are more than 1 billion then that is in the case of modern electronics so it's a gsi so combinedly this ulsi and gsi we combine as a vlsi so let's start and try to identify this a very famous image from 1959 and i hope you all know this this is nothing but a 5 megabyte hard drive which is shipped by the ibm in 1956 so it's a very famous image from the history so the beauty of vlsi lie here so now you can see that it's a memory card of sandisk it's size of around one terabyte so this is called advancement so last 70 years we came a very long journey okay so previously one ter one five megabyte of hard drive is of a large size refrigerator and now you can small you can hold a a uh, very tiny memory card in your hand and its size is around one terabyte so what is vlsi so vlsi uh, we can see that it's a first generation processor developed by the intel it's intel 4004 it's a 4 bit microprocessor so it is basically used for the calculation purpose and it was uh, made by the intel uh, go the it co Intel company is co-founded by Mr. Gordon Moore and uh, they uh, you will amaze to know that there is a full form of Intel also Intel stands for INT stand for integrated and EL stand for electronic so full form of Intel is also like integrated electronics so Intel in 1971 fabricated the first uh, processor that is Intel 4004 and now as we all using the intel laptops in our uh, daily life so it's a 12th generation intel core processor family so we move from a 4-bit microprocessor to a 64-bit processor in last let us say 50 years so 50 years is a very technological adv advancement in vlsi so vlsi is what so VLSI is a process of creating integrated circuit by combining millions or billions of the MOS transistor onto a single chip. So that is a proper definition of the VLSI. So uh, how we integrate those uh, number of transistor onto a uh, IC? So that depends upon the technology roadmap. So uh, technology roadmap decides how we move ahead in the future. So Initially, let us say if what when uh, we say that it's 22 nanometer of technology was there, then it's 14 nanometer. Nowadays, it is around 10 nanometer. So you are using most probably you are using your mobile phone or your laptop, which is made around the 10 nanometer technology. And after 10 nanometer, you will in the next technology would be 7 nanometer, 5 nanometer. So this, they, these technology currently are in research and very soon you will be able to see in your mobile devices and laptop devices that 7 nanometer technology. So it's question arises how small is nanometer? We all know that nanometer stands for 10 to the power minus 9 but in act, if what you want to imagine how small is nanometer in a scale so you can imagine like this. So a uh, Mr. Albert Einstein is around 1.73 meter so he will be lie in the scale somewhere around here and uh, the fly size is around 7 nanometer 7 millimeter so it's around here that's my 300 nano micrometer somewhere around here the blood cell is around 7 micrometer it's like here the it's a virus like let's say coronavirus so it's around here so it's 100 nanometer of size and this is a lattice of silicon atom so interatomic distance is around 0 0.24 nanometer it is less than uh, a quarter nanometer so it's 
somewhere like this so if you want to imagine how small is a nanometer so you need to see your fingernails so average human the nail growth size is around one nanometer per second so let us say uh, from now after one second your nail growth by one nanometer so after from from now to after 10 seconds you are now your nail growth by 10 nanometer so that was the size of the single transistor that was fabricated on a chip so that is imagine it's you can imagine how small it is okay so nanometer is quite small so that's how we integrate all those tiny transistor onto an integrated circuit and we make connections also it is not about the just integration of the transistor we need to make the connections and circuits also so it's a very complicated process so uh, if you want to know the cost of the vlsi chip for example the intel core i9 processor it's roughly around 40000 inr but it is having around 10 billion transistor fabricated on that uh, that ic so if you know that it's a rice of grain so one kilogram rice of grain is around 100 rupees so in one kilogram it is roughly around 50,000 grains you will get so is as far as cost cost per transistor is much lesser than the even a single grain of a rice so per transistor overall cost is much less than the single grain of the uh, rice so you can imagine so it's all start with the moore's law uh, moore's law mr gordon moore's which was uh, initially employed in the fairchild semiconductor after resigning from fairchild semiconductor he uh, uh, along with mr robert news he uh, started his own company that is in known as the integrated electronics or we commonly known as the intel so in 1965 he predicted and gave a very famous quote that number of the transistor on a chip and its performance would be doubled in every 18 to 24 months so that was the prediction he made in 1965 and uh, it was astonishingly it follows for a very long period of the time so so number of the transistor is roughly got doubled and performance also got doubled in every two years so that was the that was in history that is known as the moore's law so scaling why we need scaling so scaling is ultimately improves the performance lower the power dissipation and lower the cost also so you can see that the in the 1970s, the technology was around 10 micron technology in a rough in 2020 is around it is around 10 nanometer so technology is scaling very uh, drastically and the scaling factor is around 2.7 of previous generation so technology scaling is around scaling uh, this 0 0.7 is known as the scaling factor so ultimate ultimate why we need scaling because we want higher performance we want lower power and the cost per transistor is also gets lower as we scale down the transistor so vlsi domain so vlsi domain is uh, mainly compromise of logic design in which the circuit design and programming and analysis part has done then after that the using the cad tool we try to implement uh, using the uh, software so tools used to design the circuits and the make the layouts and mask of the that particular integrated circuit and after making that tool that layouts we send this gds file to the foundries for the fabrication so last one is the ic manufacturing so this is what our is vlsi domain So design as far as design process of VLSI, I see there are two types of design process. One is the front end part and second one is the back end design. In front end design, we are basically using the some hardware description language will be there like Verilog, system Verilog, VHDL, 
these are the hardware description language and we design a small circuits at the architecture point of view logical design and codes for the rtl rtl stands for register transistor logic so ultimately we are using a, some kind of uh, hardware description language in the in case of front end design whereas in the case of back end design it consists of characterization of the mos circuit library so it includes the physical design design can be manufactured and optimized chip layout to save a space reduce power and improve the performance so back end design is little bit complicated as compared to the front end design in front end design you have to write just code in the languages and you are having a build programmable gate array is just like a blank disk you have code and you need to write those code onto that uh, that particular fpg and your circuit is your hardware is ready your ic is ready whereas in the back end design you need to start with the scratch okay so it's all start with the very beginning and step by step you make a circuit and then you make a layout mask and all all the way to the gds file so and gds file is set to the library uh, the, to the uh, this foundry to make the final layout final ic so back end design is a uh, little bit complicated as compared to the front end design in the back end device there are two types of designing process are there one is semi custom and second one is full custom in semi custom design actually what we have we have made a small small uh, circuit uh, circuits and and modules and if you want to make a big big module then you need to just use those small module to make a big mo bigger module okay so it's a semi custom design in full custom design you will start from a scratch it obviously consumes a uh, very small area but it is more prone to the errors and it you need to be very careful because it needs backer uh, it will provide you backer better accuracy the glitches will be there and the delays is also small so as far as optimization point of view we always go for the uh, full custom device full custom design so the course objective of uh, vlsi is to understand the most transistor operation design and equation understand about the parasitics and perform a simple calculation understand the static and dynamic cmos logic estimate the delay of the cmos gates estimate power consumption understand the design and operation of the combination circuit so these are the major course objective which we are going to cover in upcoming lectures so this is all about the introduction of the vlsi i hope you enjoyed it Thank you. Namaste.